Hey guys, alright, this is a tutorial on scripting with Lua and specifically adding Lua support into an existing game or even possibly some application that you might have. Um, I'm going to cover uh, some very specific sort of use cases for Lua. This is not a general talk about how to write Lua code or how to actually uh, use Lua in some broader a application like World of Warcraft or um, uh, uh, Corona or any of those sort of applications. This is coming at it from the other side where you already have a game written in something like say in this example Objective C or possibly uh, C Sharp if you're using Unity and uh, actually providing uh, the ability in your game to write Lua script uh, that's actually going to invoke functionality or provide configuration uh, for your game. Uh, now you'll notice that I've actually got uh, a couple of little slides here. That's because I gave this as a talk to a group, <coughs> uh, game technology meetup group uh, here in Brisbane uh, just a day or two ago and uh, a great shout out to those guys. It was a really good session and I think People there got a lot out of it. <clears throat> I did a live coding session where I actually went through in, in just over an hour and uh, showed how uh, simple it is to actually get Lua uh, integrated into your game. I just wanted to address the scope thing right up front. Uh, so just to say it again, this is not a talk about how to actually write Lua. This is a talk about how to get Lua into your game that you've already written in uh, C++ or some other language. Okay, so um, Lua itself, as I mentioned, um, it's a footprint inside of your uh, application as far as memory is um, very, very tiny. And part of that comes from the fact that Lua is quite modular. I'll show you in a little bit about how you can actually load Lua libraries, but uh, you only need to load the libraries that you actually are going to use. And this is almost gives you a sort of a sandboxing type effect because uh, Lua doesn't uh, by default come with anything other than just the um, actual runtime interpreter. So that means that uh, operations like writing to the file system and so forth uh, can't actually be done unless you load up that uh, library. So uh, y you do get a little bit of security from that. Um, but I'm going to suggest the best way to achieve uh, security if that's an issue. And I'd like to shout out to, I think it was Matt during the talk that raised this point about security. Uh, generally, if you are including scripting into your um, game or application, you should treat any script as um, having all of the access that your binary code does. So in other words, if you've got untrusted scripts, uh, they're just the same as an untrusted binary that you're shipping with your application. So uh, don't imagine that somehow there's uh, some kind of mystical barrier that's going to protect you from malicious Lua code. Uh, little Bobby Tables, the um, classic SQL injection idea. So for example, if somehow you're going to use a, um, a, a name somebody can save a game under a particular name and that's going to go through your user script. Uh, you really want to be sanitizing that stuff and don't trust any Lua script that comes or anything that's inside of a piece of text that's getting into your Lua script uh, external to your program. Uh, so Lua is embeddable <coughs> and what that simply means it's one of those annoying words embedded it can have multiple uh, meanings. I don't just mean that Lua is great on uh, devices, I also mean that you can actually host it directly inside your game. So you don't need to have a separate library, you don't need to have, to have it running on a port uh, as a separate process listening to and interpreting stuff. You can actually compile the entirety of Lua, because it's so small just compile it right inside of your existing binary and uh, because it's so portable you can easily do that without generating uh, any additional sort of code warnings or any problems. 
Now finally, obviously, Lua is a scripting language. Um, why would you want to use scripting when it's potentially going to be less performant than uh, your binary code? Well, there's a whole range of reasons, and if you're listening to this um, presentation already, you probably know that there's some uh, great benefits to be had from scripting. If you're working with um, you know, level designers or content creators, writers, um, people that are not necessarily coders, these guys, they often want to be able to provide additional functionality uh, that's going to be accessed uh, via some uh, simple scripting. And uh, by putting Lua in the mix, you, you provide these other members of your, your team with the ability to actually chip in and, and get some of that uh, functionality happening inside your game. You don't need to expose them to the compiler or the tool chain. Uh, these scriptable elements can just be dropped in. Another advantage actually flows from the way that you can mix in text. And uh, you'll see how I've done that in my game. There's a multiple different ways. You can have a separate script file. You can embed pieces of Lua into uh, other text-based resources. And uh, you, know, you can use your tooling. Uh, so if you have content creation tools, uh, in this case, I've been using Cocos Builder and see my early tutorials for that. Um, all of these things with a scripting language give you the ability to actually get pieces of script into your program quite simply uh, in a way that's much more flexible than if you're working with binary.